moving on to the next topic, which is uh, customers have certain requirements in terms of their, their physical appearance, the aesthetic finish, combined with some level of functional performance. And I'm wondering if you could extrapolate a little bit on what you generally see as options, viable options and typical solutions that you, you and your team suggest to medical device companies for combining these two variables together. Well, we've, we've been seeing uh, more and more use of the anodizing. Uh, I think basically as people are realizing that there's strong aluminums out there that can hold up to being flexed and be um, also protected from wear by the anodizing itself. We're gonna wanna make sure though that we understand what's the primary concern. Is it a aesthetic coating that has a bright color because the, uh, brightest, most brilliant anodized coatings are the thicker, less dense versions, which we call the standard type two anodizing. Or is wear resistance the primary factor? In that case, we would go to a type three hard type anodizing, even though both versions are hard. The hardest version is as hard as a diamond. The downside to the harder version of the anodizing is, is you can't do as brilliant of the coloring. It'll have more muted colors. It's more of a functional coating. It's, it's not aesthetically as um, variable. Um, when we get into electroless nickel plating, um, we want to make sure we understand, again, what's the primary function? Is, is it that the coating is holding up the corrosion, wear, or lubricity? Now, we've been working quite hard on trying to find processes that combine all three of these, but with the electroless nickel process, there are different versions of the bath. There's the best corrosion resistant version, there's the best wear resistant version, and then there's the best uh, for uh, lubricity. And um, we need to understand which of those is of primary concern, so we pick the right version of electroless nickel plating. When it comes to electrolytic plating, usually um, in the medical industry, we see the precious metals used mostly, whether it's gold or silver and this would be medical devices that are test type equipment measuring equipment and the conductivity and the corrosion resistance that you get from these conductive precious metals are are, are very critical but we need to understand if there's some wear involved we might need to look at a hard gold plating versus the standard soft gold plating and then when it comes to the paint and powder coatings some of these have better light fastness, more resistance to um, sterilization. Uh, some paints have better hardness. There's a certain degree of that though. Overall though, you know, you need to understand what's most important, the, how shiny the paint is, how dull it is, um, how well it holds up to sterilization from fading. So all of these things need to be considered when we're engineering. And then back to the discussion we had earlier, Corey, the base metal might have a limitation on which of these we can choose. Again, getting involved with our customers very early in the design of the process, there's been uh, situations I've been involved in where stainless steel was picked, the customer doesn't even really want to use stainless steel, it's too expensive and it's too heavy, but it's been so far down the uh, line now as far as making prints, ordering materials, that switching to aluminum so that anodizing could be used is very difficult for our customer to make that switch later on in the engineering. So Steve, sounds like there's a there's really a quite a variety of, of options available for medical device companies considering what what sort of functionality that they're incorporating into the device itself, whether it's a tribological requirement, uh, wear, lubricity, hardness, et cetera, or whether it's it's something related to conductivity for a device itself, depending on how it's used as a component. I think we'd be remiss not to also mention the kind of third big category that we work on as an organization extensively, which is this whole category of antimicrobial finishes. And Correct. depending on what customer's use environment is, if they're looking for some form of protection for their users or patients uh, between cleanings, uh, basically all of the options that we're, saying, we're presenting today have some form of antimicrobial properties that can be integrated into the solution itself. So that's a topic for another bigger discussion, obviously, but I think it's worth uh, at least mentioning as part of what options we have for functionality with these finishes. Yeah, yeah absolutely, Corey. I mean, um, we've been working very hard on ident and identifying the options that have the best efficacy and then also um, can hold up 
when they're being put into you know different functional applications whether it's wear or corrosion or cleaning or sterilization excellent excellent